Happy Wednesday, sending a big Wednesday cheers for you. My voice sounds a little bit like a man, but hopefully you can look past that today. Thank you for being here. I am so excited for today's Coffee with Kim. I hope there is something warm and caffeine related in your cup because today is going to be a power packed session. If you haven't already, say hello in the chat. We're a really fun group. Say hi to Leslie, who's coming in from Stockholm, and Jeff and Horatio from Houston. We got a great crowd, so please say hi. Let us know where you're coming in from and maybe what is in your cup because I think it could be really fun if we all feel like we're in a cozy coffee shop together. Now, if you're new here, welcome. Every single week we gather at 1 p.m. Eastern on Wednesdays to talk to interesting founders and experts and CEOs all about how they were able to skip ahead, find success so we can copy down their homework and use exactly what works in our own everyday lives. So today we're gonna do something a little different because instead of bringing a guest on to chat with them about what works, I thought we could take a deep dive based off a mini workshop I held a couple weeks ago all about LinkedIn. The response was so positive and so motivating that I thought, hmm, there, there seems to be something with these mini workshops and just perhaps it's something that we should do a little more of. So I asked around and according to everybody, mentorship was something that was really interesting and also really confusing. So that is going to be the topic of today's mini workshop. It's going to be all about mentors, how to find them, what they are, how to utilize them, and how they can help you power up your career track and get you where you want to be. But remember, this is an interactive workshop. That's right. It's going to be me, but also a whole lot of you. So please drop in questions, thoughts, comments, concerns, so that I can feel them in real time as we're going through this. So do not, I repeat, do not wait until the end to get your questions in. Pop them in right there. I promise I'm very good at multitasking. I can see the question. I can carry on all at one time. So please feel free to drop them in. I don't know if you are anything like me, but I am very type A, and I always like to know what exactly is going on with my day. So, so if you're a little bit like me, which, you know, if you're here and you like getting better and you like learning, eh, I think you may be kind of like me. So I put together a workshop agenda so that you can see exactly what we are going to be going through today. So obviously check off the first one. You've met me. Hey there. Happy that you are here again. My name is Kim Kelp, and I'm so excited you're joining us today. We are going to pop right into defining what exactly a mentor is. I'm going to break down my four mentor method that has been covered in Inc. It has been covered in Forbes. If I do say so myself, I like to say it's kind of a game changer. So I'm excited to share that with you today. The big question, do I need official mentors? Along with the two biggest mentor mistakes that I continually see with people, whether it's founders or leaders that I work with. And then last but not least, the circle of life, bringing it all together and bringing it in in real time. Do not forget, as I repeat, ask questions as we go. And don't forget to hit the follow button on LinkedIn. I've gotten a couple messages from people who are like, we didn't know the workshop was happening. What's going on? And ah, it's because they didn't hit the follow button. I don't control the algorithm and I know you don't either, but we just try our best to battle the algorithm where we can. So if you will help me in battling the algorithm, press the follow button so that it can notify you what is going on. And I just wanted to say a big hi to Jenna, the hazelnut Starbucks coffee 
always a good one Elfron, along with florence and brendan uh and sarah and peter and we just scott it was such a great group here today so again if you haven't already let us know where you're coming in from hi heather in new york and michelle in my home state of florida welcome i'm so glad you guys are here okay so now that we know exactly what we're going into let's dive into the juicy stuff and this is where i'm going to turn it a little bit back on you and ask what do you think of when you hear the word mentor what are like those first flashy thoughts that pop in your mind that when i say the word mentor it's just like bah, 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 bah. what image is coming to mind I'll go first because I know sometimes people don't like to go first. I'll go first, but but Scott and Todd, I want to see your answers in there too. When I hear the word mentor, the first thought that pops into my mind is like really old guy at like a corporate desk who um, is maybe like balding and has been there for like a million years and he's gonna come over to my desk and he's gonna be like back in my day we walked five miles to work and we didn't have all your technology to help us do the math i don't know that's sort of my immediate go-to when i hear i know that sounds crazy when i hear the word mentor that's what comes to mind for me. So Brennan, coach, advisor, so true. Jeff, a guide. I think Jeff might have cheated on the answer a little bit. Um, but Shelby with the intimidation. I know mentorship can kind of be like scary when you think about it. Hannah, passionate people, helping people grow. That is my favorite definition of mentor that I've seen lately. <laughs> Scott with the tweed jacket. That was kind of going off fine. Like the guy in the corner in the tweed jacket, or maybe it's the gal in the corner in the tweed jacket who's like, back in my day, we used to walk five miles to work. So these are amazing answers and they are really, you know, kind of a shock when you think about it, because while we know the definition of a mentor, it's very sometimes different than what the kind of automatic picture that we all conjure up when we hear the word mentor. And so if we actually look at the definition of a mentor, like, like really like get out Google, get out Wikipedia, what is the definition of a mentor? The actual definition of a mentor is an experienced and trusted advisor. Now notice that that definition doesn't say anything about age. That definition doesn't say anything about status in the workplace. The definition doesn't say anything about really qualifications in general, because again, it's just a trusted and experienced advisor. That means it can come in all different shapes, forms, departments, how long they've been at the company, how short they've been at the company. If they are trusted and they are experienced, then boom, that my friends, is a mentor. That is really what a mentor is. And I always like to paint this example because I think when we immediately, myself included, think of a mentor as old, we miss the opportunity to see mentors that could be right in front of us. And I'll, I'll give you an example right now from my personal life. I have a niece. She is about 11. And I joke to everyone that she is my, she is my iPhone guru. She, she is my iPhone mentor. If something is happening on my phone, it's lighting up, it's beeping, it's booping at me. I go to her and say, fix this. Right. And she's 11, but, but she is, she's my, she's my iPhone mentor. She's my, I, why? Because she's experienced and she's trusted. And remember, those were all the qualifications we needed for a mentor experience and trusted. And so that to me, when we talk about mentors is really the heart of mentorship. And to Jeff's point, you know, not all mentors need to be known. And we're going to dig into that a little bit later, but I think it's a great point to bring up now that if somebody is experienced and somebody is trusted, they can qualify as your mentor, whether you know them or maybe not. Uh, in this case, I hope I'm helping mentor you on mentors.
very meta. I feel like we're in the matrix and I'm new, but but hop along because we're getting into it now. My favorite part, if I do say so myself, getting into what a mentor breakdown looks like. So again, we're going from experienced and trusted advisor to what a mentor really can help you with. Because when you think about your career and you think about your job and your life and your title, it really falls into two categories. One being your industry, whether you work in banking, whether you work in medical, whether you work in sales, whatever your industry is, there's your industry. And then there is you as a human being. There is Kim as Kim and Todd as Todd and Peter as Peter and Nina as Nina, who we are as people. That also plays a part in your experience in the workplace. So not only does your industry play in a part, but you as a person plays into part. And these are going to be key questions that we bring up as we get into the four mentor method. But to touch on the question of how do we know if a mentor can be trusted or not, well, my friends, that is what we are going to have to do some Nancy Drew or Carmen Sandiego or James Bond style investigative work. We are going to have to do a little bit of a background check via the old Google. We are going to have to talk to people that know that person. We are going to have to do our homework to figure out if that person knows their stuff. So it's not sort of a lean back and just mentor me mentality. You got to lean in and do the homework to make sure that that person is somebody that you should be paying attention to. As we get into the four mentor method, remember these two parts, your industry and you as a person. So let's get on into it. Let's break it down. The four mentor method, my favorite, again, If you want to get into this a little bit deeper, no worries. We're going to drop it in the chat. I did a whole write-up in depth on this on LinkedIn. And again, there's video series on Inc. Magazine. It's also been written about in Forbes. But if you are more of a reader than a listener, I got you. We all learn a little bit differently. We're going to drop it in the chat. You can sink into that later or maybe just revisit if you don't want to watch this video in its entirety. But why wouldn't you want to do that? Because... It's quite fun. But if you don't, we're going to drop that article in for you to check out later. But let's dive in to the four mentor method and get into what it means in your life specifically. So the first mentor we are going to want to hunt down for you and get involved in your life is somebody that knows your industry and somebody that knows you personally two very different parts they again they know your industry and they know you personally what type of person is this this could be a boss this could be a fellow coworker this could be a friend who maybe doesn't work at your company but works in a company like yours. So if you work in a hospital, they don't work in your hospital, but they work in another hospital. Or you work on a sales team uh, for digital media, they might not work at your agency, they might work at another one. Why is this person important? Well, I am so glad that you asked. They are important because they can give you real-time feedback, both about you as a person and about your industry. So as you think about things like, where should I go next? Or what type of company should I work for? Or how can I think about climbing up the corporate ladder in a way that leaves me energized instead of a way that makes me feel depleted? This person knows you really well. So they know kind of your strengths. They know your weaknesses. They could say, Oh man, Peter, uh, you really don't like a fast paced work style. So I don't know if that agency is going to be the right fit for you. Or they're going to know you personally enough to say, Oh, you know, I know you really want to go on that track, but 
I heard that that's really about a lot of solo work and you're more of a group person. So I don't know if that's going to sound right for you. They know your strengths and weaknesses and they know you personally and the styles and the type of work that you like, because again, they're a friend or maybe they've worked with you or it's an old boss. They can give you insights on yourself. And because they know your industry really well, they know the players in the game. They can say, hmm, I've thought about that one thing or what about this other one? Or have you heard about this new job opening at our competitor at this different agency at, in a different state, in a different department? They know about the ecosphere and they can clue into things that you might not have seen or might not have noticed. So this person is going to be the easiest for you to find. I'm telling you, they're, they're hiding all around you. You just don't know it. So take a second, whether it's right now, in fact, Let's do it right now. If you have a piece of paper by you, or I know Jen's here, she probably has a post-it note not far, grab a post-it note and just brainstorm two or three different people that, again, know you personally and work in your industry that you would consider both experienced and trusted. So again, I'll pull up some examples of what that can be, but to just toss it out there, it could be a former coworker, it could be a former boss, it could be a friend in the same industry. So jot down a couple names as we move into type number two. Don't worry about doing anything with these names, just keep them steady, don't think too much about it, just as it comes to mind. So that is type numero uno. Let's get into type number two. This is somebody that knows your industry. So again, if you work in digital media, this person knows digital media. If you work in startups, this person knows startups. If you work at a hospital, this person knows hospitals. But they do not know you personally. They are not somebody that if you had a bad day, you would call them crying saying, man, do I got to tell you about my day? Like you might have with type one, which is again, that coworker friend relationship where you might be like, oh my God, you know, Kim was driving me crazy today. Let me give you an earful about her. No, this is someone that doesn't know you personally. You are not gonna go out to happy hour. You are not going to call them after you had a bad day. An example of this could be a past client. It could be an acquaintance. Again, not, not super friendly, but, but you know, you, you say hi to them in the elevator. You know what I mean? They're an acquaintance. Or it could be a friend of a friend. So somebody that you might not know really well, but again, a coworker or maybe somebody that you used to work with, they know that person really well. So that is someone that is really going to give you more of a, a holistic perspective about what you can think about in terms of your industry. So they can be helpful when it comes to, I'm thinking about switching jobs, or I'm thinking about going after this new certificate or this extended education program. They're going to know what's going to help you level up in your industry, but they are going to be completely free of any bias when it comes to your personality. So they're really going to be able to give you that 10,000 foot view of what is going on. So for anybody who watches sports or, or football or lacrosse or soccer, there's always people that are sitting up in the coach's box in the very, very top that are watching all the players that are doing all the calls. That's kind of who this person is. They know your industry, they know where the players are moving, but they're not in the nitty gritty with you. They don't know you personally. So that is going to be type number two. Again, take out another post-it note, go lower on that piece of paper and scribble down two or three names of somebody that knows your industry well, but might not know you personally. Again, could be a past client, could be an acquaintance, or it could be that friend of a friend that you see at someone's birthday or at the happy hour or at the picnic, the company picnic, whatever it is, write down two or three names. 
don't think too hard about it. As Rachel's saying, my old boss made the best mentor. Uh, exactly right. Rachel hit the nail on the head. Past bosses are great. So if it's a past client or a past boss or somebody you used to work with, scribble down their name on that piece of paper so that we have that handy. Next up is going to be type number three. This is somebody that doesn't know your industry, but knows you personally, okay? Very different things. They know nothing about your industry, but they know you personally. Who is a good example of this? Well, could be your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your cousin, a spouse, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a friend. This is someone that knows you super well, but has kind of no idea what you do or doesn't really know much about your industry. So boy, do I got a lot of those. Uh, they, they can give you good advice on, well, Kim, are you overreacting on this? Or, ooh, Todd, like I kind of, now that you're telling me this, this whole story, I'm not, did you do the right thing? Or, or maybe did you think of this? But they know nothing about your industry. They don't really know the nitty gritty, the politics. Am I right? Everybody's job, everybody's industry, there's always politics, somebody's vying for a senior position, somebody's kissing up to the boss. They don't know any of that. They don't know any of the inner workings. They don't know any of the politics. They don't know any of the industry stuff. They just know you. That is the only piece of information that they can actively speak on is you. So exactly. Jeff, so right. That would be the dad advice. Dad advice. It's like one word, dad advice, dad advice. Exactly. This is going to be someone that knows you really well, that knows how you handle situations and can actively say, have you thought about this? Or, or are you overreacting? Or are you not reacting enough? This is also going to be a pretty easy one for you to find because again, you are surrounded by them. You are surrounded by close friends, relatives, roommates, significant others, all of, even if you don't want to be, even if you think to yourself, man, I, I can't wait for this pandemic's over. So these people are not around me all the time. I'm with you. I hear you. Love my fiance. Could use a little space. So these are people that are going to be easy for you to find, but you're going to want to talk to them about situations that you have faced in your career or things that you're thinking about with work that you know that they can give you true advice on when it comes to you and how you're handling it. Last but not least, type number four, the ultimate, the hardest one yet, somebody that doesn't know your industry and they do not know you personally. This is the hardest one. Why? Because this person truly is a neutral party. They truly can give you an accurate assessment as they're seeing it without the bias of the industry and the politics that might be taking place and without the bias of your personal life and maybe your likes and dislike. This is a truly neutral party. So when anybody thinks about going to the doctor, for example, the doctor is going to tell you their expertise from their angle. And most of the time, they probably don't know you personally, but they're going to be able to give you an accurate assessment because they are this third party person that is bringing in their experience, that is bringing in their expertise to evaluate a situation that's going on with you. So an example of this might be a trust consultant. It might be a business coach. It might be a career coach. There's lots of different names for it, but it really is going to be a third party person that you are bringing in. And I know that we talked about this a little bit earlier, but this is going to be someone that you are going to have to do your homework on. You are going to have to get out Nancy Drew, Carmen Sandiego, Hardy Boys, James Bond, all your biggest researching to really find out, to check references, to vet, 
these sources because these are usually people that are coming in from a very experienced angle and we want to make sure that they are telling you the best advice that you can get and receive. And I love that Jeff is already saying that he knows an example of number four. Amazing. And Jen, another example of the type of role that Jen plays in people's lives as a coach. So again, and Rachel, yes, Jen is the best. We can all attest to that one. So um, again, this is going to be someone that you're really going to want to do your research on. And I would, I would open it up and say, if Jeff and Jen have any advice on how you can best do research on a coach or research on a business consultant, that is also going to be helpful information as you think about who this type four person can be and what they can do for you. And the biggest question of all, we talked about it a little bit, but does a mentor have to be official? So is there this big middle school style, check yes or check no? Are you my boyfriend? Are you my girlfriend? Are we dating? Is this official? And the answer to that is no, which hopefully gives you a big relief off your shoulders. It doesn't have to be official. It doesn't have to be serious. You can keep it casual. You can keep it conversational. And as Jeff pointed out earlier, it doesn't have to be someone that you know personally. It can be someone that is just there in your ecosphere, whether that's digitally or in person, it doesn't have to be someone that you personally know. Horatio's question is a mentor's job to motivate or to inspire, not the same thing. I would say, Horatio, a mentor's main job for you is to push you to look at things and, and challenge you to take up opportunities that you might not otherwise have taken up. So that's a little bit of to inspire and a little bit of motivation. So that's going to be a mentor that says, hey, you've been sitting at the same job position for three years and there's an opening in senior level and I think you should go for it. That's really what a mentor, or you're going to go to a mentor and say, I'm thinking about changing industries altogether. What do you think? And that person's going to give you their advice on that. So this four mentor method that I've come up with really helps you get a wide range and wide span of data points and information. And for any of us science nerds out there, you're going to know that the more data, the better. The more data we have, the more accurate decisions that you can make. So when we look at these four or mentor types, we're really getting a wide variety on people that know our industry really well, but also know us really well. So everyone kind of plays their own part. When you think of like the Avengers and you think of Captain America and Iron Man, everybody has their own role. So you have to assemble your own team of adventurers, your own four mentors to really help power you up to make sure that you are making the best career choices. And again, it doesn't have to be that serious. It can be super casual. You might start off today by saying, I'm gonna pick up my phone and after this mini workshop ends, I'm going to follow four of these mentor types on Instagram, or I'm going to follow four of these mentor types right here on LinkedIn. This is going to be the time where you can follow somebody digitally as well as meeting with them in person, thanks to the power of the World Wide Web. So it doesn't have to be somebody that you know personally. It could just be somebody that is giving you amazing advice and insights from afar. So it doesn't have to be that serious. It can be somebody that you just find a lot of inspiration from and motivation from, from afar. And to Mitch's point, the best mentors always will have failures in their journey. And that is really what helps them again with that experience and trusted definition that we came up with earlier they've been through the failures, so they know what it's like. And they've also seen the successes, so they know what those look like as well. So does it have to be official? No, it does not. Not at all, thanks to the power of the internet. And now is my favorite part, the two biggest mistakes, big, bigly, huge, all the big mistakes that we see people making all the time 
when it comes to mentors. So hopefully you are not guilty of one of these, but if you are, don't worry because we are going to tackle it today. Two of the biggest mistakes, let's start it off with number one, there is a difference between an advocate and a mentor. A lot of times I see people confuse these two topics and I get it. It's a little confusing. It's like advocate, mentor, like are they synonyms? Do they mean the same thing? It's a little confusing, but this is one of those scenarios where little words and little definitions make a big difference. So we remember our definition of a mentor. That was an experience and trusted advisor. The definition for an advocate is a little different. That one is going to be a person who publicly supports or recommends a particular cause or policy. Again, this is straight from dictionary.com, folks. I didn't write this, dictionary.com did. This is a person who publicly supports and recommends, could be you, could be a position you have, could be a marketing idea, a sales idea. This is someone who's going to say, that Jen, she's got what it takes, or that Jeff, he really needs that senior position, or that Giacomo, he deserves that industry award or honor. This is someone who is publicly going to advocate for you. So again, a slight difference between advocate and mentor. The definition is not the same. And why do I bring that up? I bring that up because so often I have people come to me and they say, Kim, I am very frustrated. And I, and I say, what's going on? And they say, I did your four mentor method. I had my mentors. In fact, I had more than four because I followed lots of people online and I got people in person and I have all these mentors and all I wanted was a raise or a promotion and I got nothing no raise, no promotion. There was a senior position and I didn't get it. And I had all the mentors you're talking about. And now I'm mad at you because I had all the mentors and you told me that that was going to help everything and it didn't. And why is that? This is exactly why, because a mentor is different than an advocate. An advocate is someone who's going to, again, publicly advocate you. They are usually people who are in senior positions within your company or organization or team that you are working on who can advocate on your behalf. So I'll use an example from my own life. When I was working in corporate, I was a marketing coordinator. I had an advocate for me who is a senior vice president of marketing. She was an amazing advocate who would say, why don't we let Kim sit in on this meeting? Or can we add Kim to this conference call so she can hear it too? Then when there was a position opening for a, a more senior position within the company, she was the one who really pushed and said, I think Kim is ready for this position. That was an advocate. That was a senior level person, again, within my organization, within my company, within my team that could advocate for me in certain situations, with certain clients, with teams, with internal HR and management. They are different things. So please know, biggest mistake I see, advocates and mentors, not the same thing. And, and sometimes it helps to see this kind of play out. So again, I'm going to show you a, a very clear example so that you can see what the difference of this is. So the type of scenario that you might bring to a mentor is, you know what? Oh my gosh. Like I really just, I need to make more money. Like I need to make more money. I'm not making enough money. You know, what are some different approaches that I should take? And your mentors might have lots of different ideas. They might say, well, Omar, I really think that you should look at a promotion within your company. They might say, well, you know what, Omar, what about starting an Etsy business or a side hustle or a Shopify, or why not on the weekends you start 
making furniture via TaskRabbit or any of these or driving Uber or any of these third party services, they are going to give a more 10,000 foot view to the question of, I want to make more money. How can I do that? It might not just be a simple, straightforward answer. What you might go to an advocate with is say, you know what, based on my current roles and responsibilities, I really think I'm eligible for a raise. I've been doing a lot more than what I was originally hired for. My job description has morphed and grown since I first started with the company. How have you seen that done here in the past? So again, using myself as an example, as a coordinator to somebody who is a senior vice president, I might say, if I was to go about raising this point that my current roles and responsibilities have expanded, and now I believe that my pay should also expand, how have you seen that done? And what an advocate is able to do is kind of give you the skinny. They're able to kind of do some insider trading and say, well, here's what I've seen done in the past at the company. First, you're going to want to check with your senior manager. Then you're going to want to go to HR. Then you're going to want to go to Tiffany, the assistant, because Tiffany's always got the scoop on what's going on. So they're, they're going to kind of be able to give you that like insider info on how to navigate the system. Because we all know in any workplace that we've ever worked with, there's the way that they say things are done on paper. And then there's the way things are actually done, like in real life. So an advocate's going to be able to, they're going to be able to give you the hashtag real talk. They're going to be able to say, well, this is, this is how it really goes down. If you want to get a raise, this is what you're going to have to do. So an advocate is really going to give you the, the insider perspective. Can two people, can two people be mentors of each other? Absolutely. I would highly encourage this. I think this is a great example of forming a symbiotic relationship. You can give somebody else advice. Again, maybe it's type two. Maybe it's somebody that you just know personally, but you don't know their industry. You can absolutely give them advice just like they give you advice because again, you know their strengths and weaknesses. So I think this is a brilliant point to bring up. You can absolutely have people that can be mentors back and forth with each other. That is such a great point. Thank you for bringing it up. So again, number one mistake, the difference between advocates and mentors. That is number one. The second big mistake that people make all too often is when they get done with a mentoring session, could be a quick 15 minute call, could be a catch up coffee, could be a Zoom like we're having here today. They get done with the Zoom or they get done with the coffee or they get done with the lunch and they go, that's it. That's all she wrote. I'm done for the day. And that is the biggest mistake you could make. Why? Because you always, always, always want to ask for homework. Do not, I repeat, do not let the mentoring stop as soon as you are done. So as soon as you leave that coffee shop, as soon as you disconnect from that Zoom, as soon as you hang up from that phone call, the journey is not over. Ask for homework so your learning journey can continue. Maybe ask that person, what's a newsletter that you subscribe to that you think that I also should subscribe to? What is a book that you think that I should read that you've really been interested lately? What is a podcast that I should listen to? What is a live session, shameless plug, Coffee with Kim, Wednesday, it's at 1 p.m. Eastern, that I should join every week that will help me be better? Whatever that is, keep going. Do not stop. It's like somebody who says, I ate one salad and I'm on my way to a six pack. I wish my friends or else we'd all have six packs. 
No, it is not going to take just one salad. It is going to take many salads and probably lots and lots of burpees and lots and lots of runs or Peloton bike rides. So you don't want to just stop after you do the one thing. This is something that is going to keep going over and over again. So continue to ask for homework. What are things you could be watching? What are things you could be joining? What are things you could be listening to that is going to help you get better? Pro tip, once you ask for that homework, I, it blows my mind that I have to say this, but, but I do because people come back and say, Kim, I asked for homework. Uh, and then, you know, and then, and then they don't do the homework. I know when you ask for the homework, you then have to do it. Okay. You then, if, if that person says, oh my gosh, yes. You know, Jeff, you should definitely listen to this podcast. Phil, you got to check out this news article and then you don't read it or then you don't listen to the podcast. Well, it kind of defeats the purpose of the homework. So you kind of got to do the homework. And then just like when we were back in school, <laughs> Report back on the homework, just like you had to hand in your homework assignment to the teacher. Report back to the person who told you to listen to the podcast, read that article, join that newsletter, and tell them what you think. And it doesn't have to be sunshine and rainbows. If you didn't like the podcast or you thought the newsletter was crap, <laughs> tell them, but also give them a why. Because maybe there's a meaning or maybe there's something they wanted you to pick up that you missed out on. So again, do the homework, report back on it, and see what they have to say. And Phil, absolutely, I fully support having mentors that are both older and younger than you. Back to my example of my niece, who helps me with all things technology and all things iPhone, I think younger people are brilliant mentors when it comes to new technology, new techniques, and quite frankly, helping us get out of our own head. I know I've been in the entertainment industry for 10 years and I can get a little jagged and I can get a little, well, that's the way we've always done it. I try not to, but it does happen. Having people younger around gives you a fresh perspective to say, well, how do you thought about this? And what do you think about that? And God knows when it comes to new technology, whether it's TikTok or Snapchat, we could all use someone a few years younger to help us understand what are they doing on there and how do we figure it out? So that is going to be an absolute game changer. If you can find people younger than you that can help you think about new opportunities, new technology, new mindsets that you might need to be adapting. And I love this point. A great question to ask yourself after a meeting is what now? What's next? What's my follow up? What is my homework because there are constantly opportunities to see and discover long after the mentor session is done. So that again, that's one of the biggest mistakes that I see when people say, why am I not getting enough out of my mentors? It's because they are not asking for homework. They are not asking for that follow-up that is going to help them get to the next level. And so for me, I am going to give you my own homework. Before Heather or Charlie or anybody even had the chance to ask, that's right, I'm giving you a homework. If you enjoy learning from me, if you think that this is helpful, fun, exciting, don't worry, there's more where that came from. You can head over to kimkalp.com and there are two types of learning that I do. I call it live learning and I call it leisure learning. Leisure learning is when you can learn in your boxers at two in the morning while eating potato chips. You do it at home. You do it with the laptop as you reclined. You can do it at your leisure. And those courses are through LinkedIn learning. Live learning. Sorry, Charlie, you got to put on pants and you got to brush your hair because that's going to be on video. You and me learning together. That program is going to launch in the fall, but there is a sign up, a pre-waiting list on my website that you can check out. So that is going to be homework assignment number one. And just because I know that you're an all-star, because why stop at one when you can have two homeworks? The next one is going to be 
click the follow button on LinkedIn so you can follow me on this crazy platform and stay up to date on what is going on. Why do I encourage people to check the follow button? I'll tell you exactly why, and I touched on it earlier. The LinkedIn algorithm, I can't control it. I wish I could. They're always updating it. I can't always stay up to date, but one thing I have figured out is the, the algorithm gods seem to have put a lot of power into this follow button. They have now adapted to notifications when things go live, like workshops like this. Uh, they've also adapted if there are updates to this workshop that you won't get unless you follow me. Again, I don't make the rules. I'm just trying to play by them. This is what I'm hearing from the LinkedIn team. So if you could press that follow button, that way you get all the notifications, the world will be a happier place. Uh, so Charlie, Thank you for already giving yourself homework. Superstar A grade for the day in this mini workshop. It has been so much fun to host this with you today. If you thought this workshop was helpful, can you do me a favor and just type in a little yes in the chat right now? Maybe a little thumbs up, something that says, hey Kim, you made us 17 slides and darn it, at least 10 of them were helpful. We'll go for the majority. At least 60% or more was helpful. I'm not going to try to shoot for an A. A C student is still a passing grade. So if you thought this was helpful, drop a yes or a thumbs up or any emoji of your choice in the chat so I can know, okay, we did this. We did, we did, a, we did a pretty good job. Also, if you RSVP to this event, in the event, not to worry, there will be a replay of this workshop session and we will be including meeting notes so that if you didn't have time to take notes during the session, don't worry, I got you. We've been taking notes for you. We will update it in the invite as well as on the LinkedIn post. And again, if you click that follow button, which was the second homework, you will get the meeting notes magically because the LinkedIn gods will notify you that they have been put into the event. So again, thank you so much for joining me for this mini workshop. And we are going, I think we're gonna try to hold these once a month or once every other month. So again, we've done LinkedIn creator mode, check. If you missed that, just no worries, shoot me a DM, we'll get that over to you. And this has been the second workshop all about mentorship. If you have ideas about what you would like the next workshop to cover, I'm all ears let me know. I'd love to hear from you. And as always, I would love to see you next Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern, same time, same place, where we get together for coffee. We have an amazing guest next week, Ellen. She's a phenomenal founder and CEO, but every single week we have amazing experts, CEOs, founders that join us for coffee as if we are cozy in a coffee shop together, learning from each other. So I am sending a big cheers to Mitch and Scott and Jeff and Jen and Catherine and Phil and Heather and Jessica and Susan and Peter and Nicole. Thank you for joining, sending a big cheers from me to you. And that my friends is the Mentorship 101 mini workshop.